let's start all this over so this doesn't work. So make sure this gets cut, 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 cut. Anyway, so I'd like to introduce you to the boss. Um, these are going to be used on behalf. They're going to be used for uh, breaking the main versus body decision, and they're also going to be used for the. Um, I lost the last one. Optimal pace decision. Incremental cost the first to go both graphically over here and symbolically over here. Here is a total cost function. What you're looking at for incremental cost is you're choosing some known level of output, call it Q0, and you're trying to increase output or change it to some other level. And so what you have there is a Q0 plus X. X is the change in output that's there. And you're reading off what those two costs are. And so here's the total cost associated with Q0, and here's the total cost that's associated with Q0 plus X. Incremental cost is the difference between those two, I see. So if you think about it this way, what you're looking at is it's the cost associated with your changed output less the cost that's associated with your original output. Now that X can be things like a whole shift's worth of work. It can be something along the lines of an extra 23 days of production or something along those lines. But you're looking at the additional cost induced by adding a little bit to your output that's right there. It could be a little bit or a lot. So it could be what happens when you add a new product line. It could be what happens when you add a new shift, a new plant, three plants. All these things are available for your incremental cost. You're in charge of what that there is supposed to indicate. Now the other derived cost is something that's called differential cost. And what differential cost is, a comparison between two cost functions. So we have a cost function like this, we call that cost function one, and we have another cost function like this, we'll call it cost function two. Now, cost function one has a small fixed cost relative to cost function two. Cost function one also has a large average variable cost, that alpha component, relative to cost function two, has a small alpha component. And what you're looking at for the differential cost is you're taking a specific level, of the volume index over here. And you're looking at the difference in what those two costs are for that specific volume index. So you're looking at the difference between quantity two at that volume and cost one at that volume. And so you're just looking at, again, between the two costs at the same volume level. And so you're looking at, eventually we'll be looking at the cheapest way of actually supplying a certain quantity of output right there. And that is the last derived cost that we're going to cope with.